Hi, this is Carol Levenstein, and today I am going to show you how I made this super cute acoustic guitar card that I made earlier this year for a friend's 50th birthday. First I started off with um, a piece of veneer, wood veneer, and this just happens to be cherry. You can use whatever you want. I cut a piece. My piece happens to be four inches by five and a quarter and I then split it down the middle and turned it 180 degrees and then I, I glued it down to a piece of backing cardstock to keep it secure because I'm going to be doing a lot of um, gluing and, and die cutting so I wanted to make sure it was nice and secure and so this is what it looks like and I wanted the seam down the center all of his acoustic guitars that he's had had the seam down the center and so I wanted to go for that and just by rotating it everything the grain is going horizontal but it doesn't you know you get that little center seam so the next thing is going to be the circle and what I did is I just die cut out and this circle happens to be two and three eighths of an inch across so I die cut that out and you'll notice I put it a little bit, about an inch from one of the ends. And then to create the circles, I cut whoops, two frames. This one is two and five eighths by two and a quarter. And the narrower one, and you'll notice the reason why I cut it a little bit larger is I wanted to make sure I covered it up on the front and I wanted to have a little bit um, of the frame going inside the circle. The reason why I'm doing that, I don't want it to be exactly the same size, is I'm go I wanted to go for a 3D effect so it looked like you could look inside the guitar or in a, in a real case you could actually stick your hand inside of an acoustic guitar. So that's the look I was going for. And then the narrower ring, the gold ring, the outer edge is the same size, so this is two and an eighth, two, excuse me, two and three eighths. And it's just a little bit narrower, so it's two and a quarter. You're gonna glue those together. I've done here. Sorry for all of these little bits of pieces. There you go. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna glue it to this and again I made it so that the backing hole was a, a little bit you know there was a bit of a frame on each edge because I wanted to go for that 3D look so this is what it looks like glued down okay you'll notice right here I wanted to keep this to show you be careful when you're gluing down because I used too much glue and it oozed out a little bit and I tried to rub it off and it left a mark. I'm going to try and rub it off with my rubber eraser but I don't know if it's going to work so you want to be very careful about that. Okay. Next we're going to move on to the bridge and the bridge you'll notice like I said earlier the veneer on the face of the card runs horizontally but the bridge I wanted to run vertically so that it stands out so that they don't all look the same. And so I, this is the same thing, only run vertically. And you'll notice I did sponge it a little bit to make it a little bit darker, so yet again, it'll stand out a little bit on the card. And then to get the holes for the six strings, I just took a piercing template, and I, I don't know if you can see this, but I made marks so that I would always remember to um, where I needed to poke the holes, because I just like to line things up nice and pretty. And so I lined it up and I've got my two holes here. It's lined up right on the edge and then I pierced. And this piercing template um, doesn't pierce very deep, which is great because then I was able to come back in and very carefully pierce these holes larger. And I need these to be larger so that the cording will go through. But when you are doing that, you want to be really careful, like right here at the edge. Because this is pretty stable stuff, but if you're really rough with it, it will split, and you don't want it to split. So I just 
made the holes bigger so the cording would go through. Okay, and here's with the cording through, but I wanted to show you something. On the back, I did a strip of heavy duty double stick tape because when I feed the cording through, I want it to have something to stick onto, and so it's going to stick to that. And this cording um, doesn't crease very well, so as I was, after I put them all in, I pulled them flat and I did a little strip, a narrow strip of just scotch tape to hold it temporarily. And then I put these, I installed all the brads, and these are just mini eighth inch brads. Um, I like the more vintagey looking because it was kind of going for the gold, but you can use whatever you like. As I'm putting them through, I am trying to get one of the legs and opening them up on that tape as well so that it holds it. And you want to, the reason why you need the cording pulled straight is when you put this through, if your legs of your brad pierce, it can make these go kitty wampus and not lay straight. So you want to make sure they're all pulled away and then install all the brads. And when it's done, you'll see what I mean here. See how they, they, they're going in different directions, but they're still wanting to go up. And so on the back side, after I've put in all the brads, I added um, foam dimensionals, and then I added another secondary strip of the heavy duty double stick tape. The reason being is initially the brads, or excuse me, the foam dimensionals stuck, but then after a while they popped off and I, I think just this wood is very porous. So I wanted to make sure it's stuck and didn't come apart because you don't want it to come apart after a while. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, so we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do. And I made these strips, the um, length of these cords, about six inches because I wanted to have plenty of room to stick it here and hold it down, but then on the back side, I, I didn't want to have to futz with it. Okay, so let me peel this off. Give me just a second here. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to go just a little bit lower than I'm not, I don't want it centered, I want it just a little bit lower. Okay, and we go and apply it. Okay, and you saw earlier, I made a center mark and I used my template. So I made my center mark and then I did a notch on each side. So that's a quarter inch in between my fingertips. And so a quarter inch and a quarter inch. I lay that directly on there, you'll be able to see. Here we go. And quarter inch, okay. So that gives us the six. And then, now we are going to apply our strings. And what I did is I added another strip of the, the heavy, duty, heavy duty double stick tape. And you'll see here that while I stopped the video, I applied generous amounts of foam pop dots so that to make sure everything pops up nice and smoothly. So let's peel this guy off. There we go. And I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to start in the middle. And you want to pull these taut. And so he's going to go right there, line up with that line, press him down. You want to make sure you get these tight because after a while it will relax a little bit and you don't want your strings flopping around. Okay, one more on that side. There we go. Getting close. And then three more. And I wanted to use a generous amount of the foam dimensionals that you can see on the back just because I want to make sure that it stays popped up and it doesn't sag and so that you get that nice 3D look. One more. There we go. And you see I've applied them all the way around and then also in the perimeter and I'm going to add 
just a few more at the top here a couple more here and I did trim these away so that they're a little bit shorter because they were long but I just wanted to have enough to um, be able to more easily pull them over and then we'll add a couple more around the perimeter of the circle here I don't want to go straight to the edge I want to go back a little bit so that when people look inside they don't see these they'll just see the black from the card so there you go look at that that's pretty cute okay so we'll take our card and then you'll peel all of these off which I'm not going to do because that'll take too long and stick it on there and with the width that I had to cut um, the uh, veneer my card is five and three eighths inch wide or in this case long by eight and a quarter inches across folded in half so the card is five and three eighths by eight and a quarter folded in half and then you would apply this just like that okay and the next thing we need to do is this little bone piece here and what I did is just took some vanilla cardstock and embossed it in clear so you can see that and then I punched it out with my word window punch and then I cut it in half so I've got two halves here. And then one half I just freehand cut. It does not have to be perfect because they are not perfect. And just go ahead and slide this down. And with the string being so taut, it's going to hold this in place. And you want to put it at a little bit of an angle. So centered in the strings and a little bit of an angle. And see, look at that. It doesn't move. Okay. And there we go and you'll notice I mean you look in there and you can tilt it a little bit and you get the 3d effect it's kind of it's really cool I was very happy with it and then the final thing that you need to do is my husband had one of these t um, picks lying around and I really liked how it looked I had several choices and then when I wanted to make some more he didn't have any more, so I had to go to the guitar store and pick some up. Unfortunately, they had the exact same thing. And on one side, they do have printing, and I didn't want that to show. And so I flipped it over. And as you can see, I put it foam dimensional, and then I just weaved it through there and stuck it down. And there you go. Pretty cute. I love it. Anybody who loves music or playing guitars or even listening to them will really enjoy this card. Thank you for watching today. This is Carol Levenstein with Pink Stamp Pain. Thank you very much.